Oh wait, I pressed escape and it fixed itself. Okay, cool. So, welcome back, I guess, to Freddy Fish. I'm, I know there's not much of the game left, but I'll figure something out. We're here to buy a pullet. A pullet? Forgive me for looking a wee bit stricken, but you said you needed a small female chicken? Luther, I think... I don't think I ever caught on that most of his, um, phrases or rhymes, including that one. This pulley's for sale, and she's mighty nice. Five sea urchins. That's my asking price. Here's one sea urchin, Barnacle Bob. So, each of these sea urchins is going to be paid individually, and Freddy will say, here's blank sea urchins, Barnacle Bob, every here's time. Sea urchins, Barnacle Bob. Wait, missed it. Here's three sea urchins, Barnacle Bob. Here's four sea urchins, urchins Barnacle Bob. Bob. And this last one is different because it's the last this one. This is the last sea urchin we have. Thanks a lot, Barnacle Bob. Taint thanks that I'm needing or even expecting. Just keep up your interest in pulley collecting. Let's go catch that gold. For the record, kind of amusing that there is an entire shop dedicated to only pulleys. To it's oddly tracks, specific. Sir. That's just about everything. Luther, can we use your toy as bait? Well, okay. Our trap is complete. That was quite a solid high five for characters that don't have hands. <laughs> hey, boss, look! A toy! Let's grab it! Now, Luther! <laughs> They have the most delayed reactions in the entire world to this Rube Goldberg device. I guess that wouldn't necessarily register to them right away that it's a trap, but surely they would be doing something in this time. Hey! It's Freddy Fish! And Luther! <laughs> the pinky and the brain. And Larry! Look at all those six or so toys. The squid father told us to, cause he's never had any. You should know that you can't just take things that belong to someone else. It's true. Uh, duh. you know, uh. you just might have a point there, boss. Okay. Here, boss, let's you get him get again. The squid father doesn't need the toys as much as the guy. I kind of consider these two characters to be Marv and Harry. They aren't, but they're close enough. And then Luther decides to be selfless. A bit of a departure from his earlier mood. Oh, yeah, I like my spammed ghost picture in the background there. That was pretty good. Forgot about that. Really a ghost haunting the school? It was just those sharks pretending to be. You know, those sharks. Because we know who those are from earlier in the game. They were probably in the first game that I ever I never really played, besides the demo that I mentioned. But yeah, that's the end of the game, and we're only five minutes into the video, or four minutes, or however long. So, um I might start over and see if I can get anything else that's of interest, and then just, like, stop there. Ron Gilbert, why is that name familiar? I'm not sure. But I don't think we have... Oh, paper animation? There was animation on paper for this game? I guess there had to have been. I just kind of take it for granted because so much is digital these days. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just... Yeah, we'll, we'll play again. I'll just skip to wherever it's relevant. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Alright, we're back, and we have the Mockstock Mipple Bop Whopper Bopper, or Bok Whopper Bopper. I used to have this memorized, but... Man, it's, it's such a, a mouthful of a name that I just kind of didn't remember all of it. We also have the Quark, so I guess we can get that one this time. 
that would, that'll be a little bit different. Um, and after this is probably all I'm gonna show, but I feel like, eh, this game's short enough and it has some randomization to it, so might as well take advantage of that. Um, I have to think. This is the way to the old ruins. Yeah, the old ruins. We can go this way. Casey has already helped. Way to go, Casey. Here's the pipe that we need. That pipe could be useful. I kind of talked about this already, but it's different seeing it in action. I honestly forgot about this cutscene. I always wondered how it'd feel to get your head caught in a pipe, and now I know it feels bad. <laughs> bad? How is that something that you've always wondered? One of those oddly specific things. It's like monsters versus aliens. We always knew you would, you know, save the world from aliens in space. Or whatever that line is. I only saw that movie once. And uh, I think there's something up here. Now, I need to think about this. I need to remember where everything is. Because Mock Stop, Mipple Bop, Whopper Bopper, you have to go to the trophy, and you, there's the Triple Fin, and then there's... Hmm. I'm gonna head this direction first. I know that I'll need to go to the submarine to get the oil, but... Yeah, we'll mess with that soon. The moment that I realized Freddy, uh, won a spelling bee was kind of a moment where I gained more respect for her as a character because I was kind of interested in spelling at the time and I enjoyed spelling bees and I would always actually win the spelling bees in school. Not that there was anything particularly special that we did with them, it was just like class spelling bees, occasionally grade spelling bees, and I think I always ended up on top. Show this card to Mr. Triple Fin. So, if we show this card... But yeah, I think... I gained an appreciation for the idea of spelling from an episode of Arthur, because Arthur was a big part of my life at that time, and... There was an episode where... Brain... Um... Or like, the, the episode where they were doing spelling, Brain had a dictionary in front of him and he was trying to remember how to spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. So he was like, A-N-T-I... Um... And then he would get stuck. For the record, the spelling is A-N-T-I-D-I-S-E-S-T-A-B-L-A-S-H-M-E-N-T-A-R-I-A-N-I-S-M. I probably slurred some of that because I was saying it quickly, but... Hopefully, the individual letters were enunciated enough. So here's the oil. I'm not going for all the items, I'm just going for the ones that are relevant to this playthrough that I didn't show before. Non-toxic biodegradable oil, to be exact. Non-toxic biodegradable oil. So how do you like it? I call it the wet look. Just talk to The wet look? Oh, jeez. That's, uh... That's a phrase that has some different connotations these days. But yeah. When he says that, it just makes me think of that part of all of the other reindeer that's only in some versions of the movie where... Uh, where Fido the Flea turns on the radio and it's like, Stay tuned for the latest from the North Pole. But first, a message from Grandma's old-fashioned partially hydrogenated soybean oil. I always liked that line. And I wish it was in more versions of the movie and not just... I don't know. I think it was removed for like the TV cut or that something. Looks like it's stuck on Tucker Turtle. A drop of oil might do the trick. Just one though. Even though you did too. Oh my gosh! No head! We He's dead! It clean up. It's not in here! Poor Tucker! I hope he gets a head in life, because he sure doesn't have one now. Sure I do. It was just stuck in my shell. Whew. Are we glad you're okay. Thanks to you kids. 
Yeah, he, he doesn't need to see a head shrink, that's for sure. So we have a pipe, and we can utilize this pipe for, uh, for getting that cork. Which I guess is in the school, so we'll head back into the school. We'll hug, we'll, we'll hag us into the school. So let's see what happens when you try to grab the cork without the pipe first. We can use this cork to build our truck! Whoa! You're filling the compartment with air! Phew. Just pulling out the cork is definitely not going to work. Yeah, what would be the opposite issue for for a basement in real life. Pipe would fit great we don't want a basement to be flooded with water, but for them they don't want the basement to be flooded with air. Jump in jellyfish. It worked. I told you it would fit. Now we need to get four more things to It is a, a strangely perfect fit. Like, I guess this was the pipe that, well, yeah, I, I think the pipe that um, was by Tucker the Turtle just was that specific pipe, and it ended up here, it ended up in a totally different location somehow, I don't know how. It wasn't just some random pipe. I don't know if I explained that very well, but anyway. So we've got our cork. Not that we really need it, because I'm not going to be finishing this playthrough, but oh. If you guys don't stop nosing around the schoolhouse, the ghost will turn you into a couple of fish sticks. Uh -huh. I'm no jellyfish. You can't I like how there were two me. frames of animation for him shaking his head. Well, don't say we didn't warn you. And I forgot all about that cutscene. That... I, I'm sure that shows up plenty if you, you're, well, I don't know. I remember that cutscene, but I just forgot that it existed because I think you have to re-enter the school after getting one of the items and then leave again. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's amazing what you can miss out on the first time you play and then only see the second time. So, uh, let's see, I was... Going for uh, Triple Fin, that's right. Where is Triple Fin? I don't think he's over here. I went the wrong way. I'm glad, though, that I uh, have realized this is something that I never knew before, but you can press Escape to skip cutscenes. So, Hooray! We made it to the very end useful of for a repeat playthrough like this. So here we are with Triple Fin, who doesn't have any more fins than anyone else does, so I don't know why that's his name. Watch this! Hey, you giving me the business? Your business card, sir. Well, None of your sure business. <laughs> you boys will be wanting the combination to the trophy case. Excuse me, sir, but I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. Hey, that's a coincidence. Yeah, that was... So Mrs. Triple <laughs> that moment right there was kind of, uh... Thanks for the combination, the Mr. Triple Fin. Metroid is a girl moment in the first Metroid. I know it's Samus, but gotta gotta spout out the memes, yo. Yeah, that was kind of the moment for me because Freddy is not a feminine name, really. Like, at least it wasn't to me at the time. And I know that there's an I at the the end of Freddy's name in this game, so that should imply that it was feminine, but. It's not something I ever thought about. I only ever heard Freddy as a guy's name. So, to learn that Freddy is a girl was just kind of a shock to me. But, I mean, I didn't mind. I think it's kind of cool. And it's not that common that you see female characters with really huge eyebrows, except for, like, a few anime characters and a Ashling from Secret of Kells, who... Who has one of my favorite character designs ever. I just really like her design. I've maybe said that before, but I still... I just like it. It's fun looking. It's very smooth. It has nice... I don't know. It's clean. Whatever. But we have our combination now for the Hall of Fame. For the trophy. We'll be finishing up this arc. 
pretty soon. I'll bet we can get this lock open. And I want to mention this. This was part of the reason that I wanted to play the game again. This part right here, this might look familiar if you played Riddle School 3, because this is totally the exact setup of um, of the Blobbles combination system for the locker in Riddle School 3. Like, this is what that was based on, this specific screen. It's the kind of thing that probably is in a lot of games, but I was thinking about this specifically whenever I did it. And, like, being able to pull out the, uh, the combination and everything. Yeah. So now, now you have context for that, I guess. I remember how proud I was when I won this trophy. Gee, it looks expensive. Looks like it's made out of gold. No, Luther. The trophy isn't gold. Only the memories that go <sighs> along with it. So cheesy. Yep, gotta clean it. You know what else is weird that I'm noticing? I think, because of all the things in this game that are apparently randomized, I think even the bubbles on the bottom of the screen are memorized, because I'm pretty sure this trophy was in a different bubble the last time I played this. So, yeah. Moving on, though. We can now give this trophy to... druggy dealer over here. Hey, would you like my trophy? I'll just call him Bradbury. Because that's what the Stingray in my fish game was supposed to be named. That was before Ray Bradbury died. The deal of the century. Gee, Freddy, sorry you had to give up your spelling bee trophy. I know how much. And then he randomly gets emotional. It's okay, Luther. I remember how special it was to win it, and that's what really matters. Ah, the memories. No, we don't need three more things. We are, I mean, we would if I was playing this again, but I think that's all I'm going to do. But at least we have the Mock Stock Mipplebock Whopper Bopper, which is the best name for an item. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to be it. Um, this was fun. <laughs> this is, a. Uh, like I said, a game that I have fond memories with. It's probably one of the games that got me into the point-and-click adventure game genre to begin with. This and... I think the first game that I ever actually played in this genre would be Mixed Up Mother Goose, which is even more a game for kids than this is, because there's really nothing about it that you would only discover as an adult. Um, and then there's, like, Johnny Rocket Fingers 2 on Newgrounds, which is the exact opposite of a kid's game. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see myself playing that one necessarily, so I will just finish off by it's crab invaders. playing some oh, Crab Invaders while I disappear into the nothingness. So, thank you all for watching this, uh, this nostalgic trip and I will see you another day. Finn.